Anyway, Trump's attempt to cover up his relationship with Whitaker was further undercut by a damning new report breaking just tonight. The online news site Vox is reporting that during Whitaker's time as chief of staff to Sessions, quote, he privately provided advice to the president last year on how the White House might be able to pressure the Justice Department to investigate the president's political adversaries. And one source says that Whitaker committed to extract as much as he could from the Justice Department on the president's behalf. So he was the president's wartime consigliere. Joining me now is Democratic Congressman Eric Swalwell of the House Intelligence Committee. Heidi Press Bill is a national political correspondent, in fact, the national political correspondent for NBC News. Glenn Kirshner is a former federal prosecutor. I went all three years to go at this thing, use, as we say in Philly. But no, what do you make of the president basically lying, saying he didn't know the guy he just picked? Well, why did he just pick this guy? Same reason he picked Kavanaugh. So he, he did know him? Yeah, he knew him. He knew what he wanted to do, what he had said uh, in, in prior conversations. He hired a hitman to take out the Mueller investigation. And Chris, if this had happened on Monday, we were powerless in the House. But this happened on Wednesday. We're not powerless anymore. The voters sent a Democratic majority to put a, a check on these abuses of power. So just like in the Godfrey, he waited for mom to die before he killed Fredo. Yeah, well, he, he, he knew just he'd, decided he'd, to he'd take the, more losses. This is frightening Tuesday. what he's doing. Uh, Glenn, this is pretty broad daylight hijacking. He's just taken over, basically, the supervision of the investigation of himself. Yeah, Chris, none of us are surprised that we see the president contradicting himself. He is completely untethered to the truth, and we've seen that. And I thought we were going to come in here this evening and talk about how many conflicts Whitaker has, whether it's representing Sam Clovis, whether it's the reckless statements he makes. And when I look at this through the eyes of a career prosecutor, when somebody takes a position that there is no evidence of Russian collusion, he hasn't seen a shred of evidence. He wasn't embedded in the Mueller investigation. So I think all of those things he would have presented to Preo, the Professional Responsibility Office, to see whether he had conflicts that would mean he needed to be recused, and I think they would have recommended You're not going to recuse this guy. But, but now we have He's moved do so it. far beyond that with this Vox report that yeah. just broke that says, according to multiple sources, that Whitaker is sneaking over basically two-timing on the Department of Justice employees, sneaking over to the Oval Office and advising the president, whispering in his ear, here is how we can go against your enemies and distract from the Mueller investigation. Well, guess what? With the president standing up and saying, I don't even know him, if this report is accurate and he was in the Oval Office a dozen times and he was on one-on-one -on -one phone calls with the president, well, guess what? Whitaker is now, at a minimum, a witness in the Mueller probe, Maybe a subject, and you know what? Maybe they're all conspiring. Well, an old question, but it came to mind. Covered everything. Here's the I chief mean. of staff. <laughs> what? He covered everything. No, no. There's another part. That, <laughs> okay. Where was sleepy Jeff Sessions during the time that his chief of staff was working to undercut him and replace him? Well, the question is if he knew, because according to this Vox report, uh, like Glenn said, he, he was actually two timing. He was. It, to use the word a mole, uh, right. you know, working to pressure Rosenstein and Sessions in house and advising the president as to how to do it. So this is a step. This is look, this is way beyond anything that Jeff Sessions did that, you know, demanded a recusal. This is actually trying to use showing that he was willing to use the Justice Department for the president's right. own political ends. And the difference is they're all coming to Congress now before they would have got a free pass. Now they're going to have to come to Congress and explain what their contacts were, what pledges they made to the president. It's not a, it's not a free pass. Can you in the Congress, I asked, I advised somebody who was calling me, said, well, you're always d dumping on Democrats but not giving them any thoughts. I have a thought. I said, can't you just ask Whitaker under oath, what has your contact been with the president? Absolutely. Yeah. That's, that, that will happen okay. if he lasts that long. Well, all this comes as CNN reports that there's a growing sense of concern inside the White House over the negative reaction of Matthew Whitaker. Senior officials say they were surprised by the critic. What? Surprised by the criticism and believe it could potentially jeopardize Whitaker's chances of remaining in the post if it continues to die. Oh, that, that part I don't believe. I'm sorry, Mr. and Mrs. CNN. I'm sorry. Uh, Heidi, the, just knowing the media, you put this guy in there as, as, as the president's mole, and now he's going to be acting attorney general? Well, I, the question at this point, uh, to the congressman's point, is what are the levers, right? I talked with some lawyers who are looking at their options right now, and they do believe that this is unquestionably unconstitutional to circumvent the advice and consent powers of Congress. And so the question is, they're going to be all over him like glue. Whatever his first move is, that they can find some kind of a, a plaintiff or a person yeah. with cause, that's kind of the legalistic terms, they'll be going after him. So it's, it's not a question of if, 
It's a question. Okay, let me of when. go back to the tough politics here. Yeah. The president now has 53, 54, maybe 53, maybe four senators coming into January, right? That's right. He doesn't need the two women that seem to have problems with him on issues of choice and things of choice and other issues. But he's got a little padding there. Can he confirm a guy like Chris Christie? No, I don't think he can in confirm other words, any. another kind of guy in there that will do what he wants. I don't think he can confirm someone who won't allow the Mueller investigation to continue. And I think it's would that be a condition of the Republicans who have the control over this? Would the Republicans set as a condition? We'll make you AG at the president's request. We'll 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 advise the consent, but we will not. You have to promise under oath now that you will not dump this probe. The reason I think so is there were 900 protests yesterday. Many of them had thousands of people on the outside. You, the map that the Senate had in this last election was the best map Republicans have had in 100 years. In the next election, it's much worse for them. So I think there's a lot of senators who are going to give real positive. They only need 51 positive. votes. Yeah. They don't need a single Democrat. And that's so that's a good question. It. Anyway, Glenn, let me ask you about the legality. Any way that the, the, the mechanics within the Department of Justice can throw out this, uh, this presidential uh, ringer? I don't know that they can throw him out, but if, if the professional um, office of professional responsibility, the ethics officers say you are conflicted, you must recuse, I don't think he can survive that and continue to fumble forward, particularly given these revelations. And you know, look, we all know that the White House doesn't vet the background of anybody, whether it's Scaramucci yeah. or Dr. Ronnie Jackson. I, I predict, Chris, that uh, Whitaker's tenure as the acting uh, attorney general may be even shorter than Scaramucci's well, fumbling as uh, fumbling communications forward director. Fumbling forward is a great metaphor because yeah. you keep fumbling the ball, losing control of the ball, and then grabbing it again further downfield. Anyway, Trump's obvious attempt to mislead reporters about his relationship with Whitaker puts all his claims about Whitaker in doubt, including this claim about the Russia probe. I didn't speak to Matt Whitaker about it. I don't know Matt Whitaker. Does the president get in trouble for lying? <laughs> Eventually. Anyway, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. And, and Trump all had this, also had this to say when asked if he expected Whitaker to rein in Mueller. It's up to him. Do you want him to rein in Robert Mueller? What a stupid question that is. What a stupid question. That's nice talk. A little defensive. Yeah. Well, Congressman, the question was, do you expect him to rein in Mueller? We're going to prevent that. Again, the days of them just getting away with this stuff are over. It's not going to happen. Starting have, January we have, first. No, no. We have a budget battle coming right now, and we're going to insist upon protecting Mueller if they want Democratic votes. You're going to see that. Uh, coming forward. Can you insist that he fund Mueller? That they can't start starting? Mueller is the funded uh, through next September. Uh, okay, I believe. Yeah. Uh, Heidi. He didn't have to issue the Comey oath, you know, uh, of loyalty oath there because there was all of this, you know, footage of him on TV, Whitaker on TV, showing that he was loyal. He and, for this. And, and the, let's, let's just tell people, the Vox reporting is that he not only met several times in the Oval Office, but had one-on-one -on -one conversations, phone conversations with Whitaker as well. And I think I think the answer to the question, do you want the Mueller investigation to be reined in? His answer, that's a stupid question. You're stupid. Mueller is hearing that as consciousness of guilt. The answer is, of course, I want it reined in. Why do you think I just appointed Whitaker? <laughs> I'm not sure that's what he wanted us to hear, but you heard it and others will. Thank you, U.S. Congressman Eric Swole of California, Heidi Presbilla and Glenn Kirshner. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.